to Devraj and Deepak uh, indeed very very interesting uh, presentations. So so good morning uh, India. So first of all I'd like to thank the organizing committee for uh, giving me the invitation and uh, the chance to to contribute today. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Srivastava, the Director of Exploration in ONGC, as well as Mr. Goswani and uh, Mr. Moitra for sponsoring this event. So, as you mentioned, uh, Shalesh, uh, the energy, a Asia's energy demand is, uh, is very much bound to grow for decades to come. And alongside this growth in, uh, in energy supplies, addressing the, the trilemma of energy security, affordability, and sustainability is paramount. And uh, as it stands today, when we look at the global greenhouse gas emissions, they are estimated in the order of about 55 uh, gigaton per annum of a carbon dioxide equivalent, out of which about 42% are attributed to a scope one, two, and three of the oil and gas sector. So surely the oil and gas sector has a material play, uh, material participation in this, and and will be a key uh, industry when it comes to to decarbonizing the the planet. So throughout this presentation, what I'm intending to to do is take you through uh, the avenues to reduce the the carbon footprint of the oil and gas value chain, alongside what we're doing in Solomberger when it comes to climate action strategy, to reduce emission in our own operations, support our customers. Uh, accelerate their decarbonization journey. You mentioned scope free in the introduction, and uh, that's very much going to be all scope free, and uh, and expand as well beyond oil and gas. So I'll uh, I'll try to stick to the 15 minutes as requested, uh, Shalesh. So the the events of the past year and and the pandemic have, without any doubt, uh, accelerated many uh, many of the ongoing changes in the energy industry. And, uh, and we're facing today very much a new landscape, but as well we're facing an increased urgency to deliver on key mandates, which are cost efficiency, capital intensity, and carbon reduction. So looking at the, the current industry dynamics, we see today a new cycle of oil and gas uh, demand growth beginning, and I think uh, Deepak and Devraj uh, mentioned it as well, with the onset of uh, a strong multi-year economic rebound. Uh, industry demand projection for oil and gas continue to show growth and resilience, and obviously gas will be a key pillar of that energy mix, as uh, Devraj explained. So in this, uh, in this context, uh, the long-term competitiveness of our industry depends on a number of things, so effectively on uh, technology, data, and will depend on, uh, on developing collaboration to, in to deliver on these industry mandates and deliver higher value and deliver that at a lower carbon footprint is very much a key enabler as we go through this uh, energy transition. And I think uh, the past year has very much given us the, the opportunity to reimagine our industry. And today I'll be sharing uh, really our approach uh, to generating higher value with lower carbon footprint. So when we look at the total greenhouse gas emissions, I've mentioned 55 gigaton of carbon dioxide equivalent. When we zoom in on the contribution to fossil fuels, you could say that 70% of that, if I take coal out of the equation and I focus on uh, oil and gas around 42% or 23 gigaton of carbon dioxide equivalent are linked to the oil and gas sector. The, out of these 23 gigaton, 5 gigaton are related to the value chain of getting the oil and gas to market, which essentially is, you would call that the scope 1 and 2 emissions. And the rest, which are the scope 3 emissions, which are obviously larger, are generated from the usage of the end-use fuels, such as diesel, gasoline, and so on, as they're being consumed. So when we zoom in on the scope 1 and 2 of the oil and gas value chain, uh, more than half of the emissions are related to fugitive methane leaks uh, during production, transportation, hydrocarbon processing. The next big element, or the next big source of the scope one and two emissions are uh, related to downstream activities such as uh, heat and power required for refineries. And following with that, you've got the extraction, the drilling, uh, the flaring and uh, in general crude transport and a little bit as well is going into hydrogen production. 
So in order to, to reduce carbon dioxide emissions to net zero, uh, very much all of these sources will have to be addressed, including the small one. But obviously we'll have to go by, a, by priority, but all of these sources of emissions will have to be addressed in some shape or, or another. So let me turn now to, uh, to very much what we're doing inside Slamberger when it comes to lowering carbon emissions and carbon intensity. So earlier this year, uh, back in June, we announced uh, a net zero uh, 2050 ambition. And I will echo what you said, uh, Shellesh, net zero in 2050 by itself does not mean much if you have some clear deliverables in a, in a short to medium term. So for us, we take this, uh, this commitment as a company that believes very much in the power of technology to create a change. Uh, our science-based approach to climate change is aligned with the 1.5 degree target of the COP21 uh, Paris Agreement. And as you can see on the slide, rather than just considering uh, the scope one and two parts of, the, of our emissions, which is what many companies are considering today, or, or net zero target actually encompasses or total greenhouse gas footprint, including our scope-free emissions. And as such, our emissions redu reduction roadmap addresses the entire oil and gas value chain from a Sambergé perspective. So in order to avoid uh, any impression of greenwashing, uh, our 2050 uh, target is supported by uh, targets in 2025 and 2030. And these medium-term targets are backed by climate science. And uh, we continue to work with the science-based uh, target initiative, uh, the SBTI, for, for formal external validation of our medium-term deliverables. So obviously, over the coming years, we'll be very transparent about our progress in this journey in line with uh, the Task Force for Climate-Related uh, Financial Disclosures and the uh, Sustainability Accounting uh, Standards Board, the SSB framework. So actually turning into a framework part of it. So we've put in place uh, a comprehensive decarbonization framework that includes emissions reduction across uh, our entire value chain. And we believe this is uh, very much uh, an enabler uh, for, uh, for these actions to take place. There are three key components to achieving uh, our net zero ambition, and uh, we're actively working on these three pillars today, which are uh, operational emissions, carbon negative actions, and technology use emissions, which are this famous scope free referred to. So the first area when it comes to emissions in operation, and for us as a oil field services company, uh, these emissions in operations represent around 25% of our emissions baseline footprint. So we will, we've already uh, begun to convert our facilities at scale to renewable power. And uh, our India, India team uh, on this call is uh, very much leading the way. I mean, uh, we have converted quite a few of our facilities in India to renewable power already. We are expanding that and we're as well in the process of electrifying our fleet of vehicles uh, worldwide. In addition, we found uh, that uh, digital adoption is very much playing a key role in uh, driving waste and uh, very much emissions out of operations. So this has been very visible to us uh, in the last two years during the pandemic. And, uh, and now we're using very much digital to drive uh, emissions out of our operational footprint. The second element of our decarbonization framework is around carbon negative actions to minimize our reliance on, on, on offsets in our uh, net zero journey. So one current uh, example relating to uh, carbon negative action, actions would be, for instance, bioenergy with CCS. So earlier this year, with our partners, uh, Chevron and Microsoft, we've announced uh, plans to develop the first large-scale uh, bioenergy with uh, carbon capture and storage plants in the world, uh, in the U.S. So this is very much a unique project, a carbon-negative project and a carbon-negative technology, and uh, we will remove around 300,000 tons of carbon dioxide annually out of this, uh, out of this uh, pilot project. And then the third element of this uh, decarbonization framework addresses customer emissions, which for us are scope-free. And uh, this is a very important part of the emissions footprint, considering these 
technology use emissions, if I would call them, are very much about 75% of our total uh, CO2 uh, footprint. They are for us as an oil field services company, they are scope free, but for mo most of our customers, they would fall into their scope one. So in, co in conjunction with this uh, net zero commitment, we've also launched uh, a, a technology portfolio very much focused on supporting our customers' decarbonization journey. So this portfolio of uh, solution addresses uh, technology use emissions with very much a focus on flaring, venting, and power consumptions during uh, oil and gas operations and production. Uh, what's key is, uh, is to develop actually uh, a quantification framework to make sure that CO2 footprint and CO2 reductions are being targeted. So we've created uh, a quantification framework to standardize calculation and enable uh, benchmarking through uh, net footprint comparisons. Uh, we've extended this exercise as well to our R&D portfolio, and today uh, there is no technology being launched if it does not actively support uh, emissions reductions and CO2 reductions. So as I mentioned, we are very much targeting fugitive emissions, flaring, electrifications. So when it comes to, to fugitive emissions, uh, we're already deploying technologies that, uh, that support our customers from identifying these fugitive emissions to helping them reduce them. So for instance, uh, low emission valves. Uh, we also have uh, technologies that have uh, recently been uh, commercialized that uh, remove the need for flaring, such as the uh, Aura Intelligent uh, Formation Testing Platform. And when it comes to electrification, and I think Dev Raj uh, hinted it at the end of his presentation on subsea compression, I think electrification is very much uh, something that's going to take place in uh, in our industry over the coming years and decades. So some parts of the world are already there. I think in Asia we're a little bit behind on this, but this is coming. And uh, and very much uh, we're taking the lead when it comes to providing a, a totally electric solution from the wellbore to the production facility, which will have a significant uh, decarbonization benefits. And uh, obviously a fully electric production system not only paves the way to uh, complete uh, digital capabilities, but as well to full electric platform and, uh, and plants that can be re operated uh, remotely. And uh, this is very much gonna be a revolutionary, I think, over the coming, uh, over the coming years. So, so in summary, we're, we are fully committed to being a true net zero company uh, we'll leverage our transition technology portfolio and we'll work with our customers to advance their uh, decarbonization journey and to make sure that uh, oil and gas uh, carbon footprint gets materially reduced in, uh, in coming years. Now, my last slide, I just want to mention as well what we're doing beyond oil and gas. So obviously we're very focused on oil and gas. We are driving emissions out of our operations. We're helping our customers reduce their, uh, their carbon footprint associated with oil and gas operations, but as well, we're expanding beyond oil and gas. Uh, we call that Schlumberger New Energy or New Energy Ventures. And really, we're focusing on low carbon, carbon neutral, or even carbon negative technologies. So as I'm sure uh, you're aware, uh, we've been involved in uh, carbon capture and storage or carbon capture utilization and, and storage for over 30, 15 years now. Uh, we're currently engaged in over uh, 20 projects globally, and these come across sectors as diverse as oil and gas, obviously, but as well power generation, cement, uh, chemicals, agriculture, you name it. Uh, as I mentioned, we've launched uh, that pilot around bioenergy with CCS, which is effectively uh, a carbon uh, negative uh, technology. Uh, and, and very much we're from the view that you uh, presented at the beginning, Shalesh, which is there is, uh, I mean, carbon capture and storage are critical for uh, any major uh, decarbonization roadmap. I think CCS will be very beneficial in the art to abate sectors where option to decarbonize or electrify are limited. And this is where CCS will make a major impact. So as well, uh, as you're aware, we've, uh, we've been as a company very much engaged in geothermal for several decades. And in this part of the globe, uh, Indonesia, Philippines, New Zealand have been the most active uh, place. 
Indonesia, India is surely as uh, an area of interest for us, and uh, and we're looking at that, and we're working with customers to to screen a potential geothermal place alongside with our partner uh, Geofermex, which uh, which is very much involved in the majority of the of the geothermal projects worldwide. Uh, last year, as well, we've announced the creation of Celsius Energy, which is a, a startup with uh, unique capabilities when it comes to providing uh, geoenergy to heat or cool buildings at a fraction of the CO2 footprint. So this holds a very promising future. We already have a number of projects ongoing around this, and this will help drive decarbonization of the commercial and residential buildings. As well, uh, last year in 2020, we've announced uh, the creation of our Genvia partnership in France, which is built around uh, a unique uh, reverse solid oxide electrolyzer technology. So the focus here is very much to enable the production of green hydrogen. So hydrogen out of the renewable powers and essentially get hydrogen out of water electrolysis. And we're looking at growing this up in the gigawatt scale. So very much, uh, very much at scale and with a much lower electricity consumption versus uh, other alternative in the market. So a very exciting uh, venture into hydrogen. And uh, earlier this year, we've as well announced uh, the launch of a direct lithium extraction pilot plant in the US, in Nevada, whereby we foresee the environmentally friendly production of uh, battery grade lithium with much reduced uh, water requirements. So the intention here would be to use up this pilot as a proof of concept before scaling it up and, uh, and supporting uh, lithium production very much in line with some of the uh, electric vehicle growth and so on. So overall, this uh, portfolio beyond oil and gas is very much an exciting uh, vertical that we're growing uh, in the company. Uh, more uh, technologies, more ventures will be announced uh, shortly. We intend to leverage your core competencies, meaning our subsurface technology expertise and our project management capabilities to develop these new energy businesses. And, uh, and really, uh, this, is, uh, this is the third pillar of our uh, decarbonization strategy, if I would say. So we reduce em emissions in our own operations. We uh, support our customers when it comes to uh, reducing their emissions via our scope three, which are our scope one and we're expanding beyond oil and gas. So that's all I wanted to share, Ashilesh, in a short amount of time, and I'll be more than happy to, uh, to take questions uh, during the Q&A.